All right. Well, welcome everyone. I see a lot of new names here, uh, which is super exciting. We have exploded in terms of the number of new members that are part of the group. We are we're getting close to hitting 5,000 members, which is pretty insane. I mean, we we started the group about three months ago, maybe two months ago, and thought that we would maybe maybe have 50 people join, 50 fellow nerds who are interested in you know this AI thing and this chat GPT thing. And it is just totally surpass any sort of expectations that we had. And um, it's been so much fun to meet all of you and get to know how you're using this tech in your business. And what I want to start off with is really the purpose of the group. Um, we just updated the name yesterday to ChatGPT plus AI and real estate. And the reason is ChatGPT is kind of like the, the, the thing that people first hear about it's the gateway into this whole AI tech surge. Um, and, and we have been talking for a couple of weeks about, okay, well, you know, there are a lot of other tools that people are using that deploy AI tech in their business. And so we just made a little minor tweak to the name to kind of encompass this natural progression towards the use of AI in general in real estate. Um, but it's a pretty significant one. And I think that we're all, especially the folks on this call and folks that are watching this um, asynchronously that aren't here with us today, um, are really curious about what's next. How else can I use AI in my business? And so that's the direction of this group. Um, we want to continue learning as much as we can about the ways that we can use the natural language programming that's behind ChatGPT and deploy that in our business, but also what else can we do? Um, so the purpose of these workshops is really to bring those ideas to the forefront, to share with each other, to learn. And the purpose of the group in general, um, I think it's kind of threefold. One, I would love for everyone to meet other agents that are using AI in their business. I think we all have something to learn from one another. And so that brings me to the second purpose, which is, to learn about AI. And the third purpose is to leverage. So one of the things that I'm hoping that we all, as we become more comfortable with this tech and as we learn it better and more deeply and more profoundly, we'll start thinking of new ways that we can leverage it to increase, increase our productivity, um, to increase our happiness, um, and to just build better businesses and better lives. So uh, with that, I would love for us to spend a couple of minutes introducing ourselves. You can just shout out your name and where you're from. Um, Azadeh, do you want to start? Hi. Hi. Yes, I am. My name is Azadeh and I'm from the Las Vegas market. So good to meet you. Thank you as well. I'm Tammy, I'm from Southern California and I sell everything from LA County down to San Diego and in between. Thank you, Tammy. Hi, this is Renata. I serve as Metro Atlanta area. If you're more comfortable just dropping your name in the, the chat and you're the market that you serve. Hi, Lena. Um, good to see you again. That's totally okay. I just want to make sure that if, if you, you know, are here and want to um, connect with other agents that are using this tech in their business and learn from them, uh, this is an opportunity for you to do so. Um, so again, one of the main purposes of the group is community. And I want to make sure that everyone's given the opportunity to participate in that if they want it. Um, just going to check the Facebook group really quickly to see if anyone else is trying to get in. Okay, I think we're good. Well, thank you again for being here. Um, this is one of two weekly open Zoom sessions that we have. Uh, they're called workshops. And uh, the first couple ones, we 
kind of toyed with the idea of, okay, well, maybe we should uh, bring content and, and teach things. Um, but really, we, we, we would love for these workshops to be open-ended sort of uh, brainstorming sessions about ways that agents that are boots on the ground, that are actually in real estate are using AI. Um, so if you have questions or you have ideas or you have thoughts or wonderments or dreams about how to use this tech in your business, how you're using it, the successes you're having, the failures you're having, this is the place to do it. Um, so how was the last week for everyone? I know that some of you weren't here last week. Some of you were. Um, what are some some things that were wins? What did, did everyone have the chance to use any sort of AI in their business last week? I'll go ahead and say yeah. that since we have been in these classes, since I've been participating and plugging in, being consistent, I, you know, I've done such things as doing my um, calendar. Um, I'm using it solely for creating like the post content and I'm, you know, doing the tweaking within the, the chat GPT, but I will say this, I've had um, three potential prospects reach out to me now through whether it's social media and or LinkedIn, because I'm resourcing all of this for all of them. So uh, I do feel like with along with the consistency, using its tools, whether it's the, you know, the hooks I'm asking for or the call to actions that I'm asking for when I put in it, but something's working because my engagement just on, if you notice on LinkedIn, it'll give you like your weekly analytics. Mm -hmm. I had, it was 80, 82 or 87. It was either 87.2 or 82.7 increase in just one week's time of engagement. So um, I do think there's a whole ton of positivity. I just don't want to get stuck using it for one thing when there's so many other ways we could be using it. That's all. <laughs> That's all. That's uh, mic drop. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so the rest of you guys, but it's really, I'm seeing it work. So what? let's, I'd love to dig a little bit deeper into that what were you doing before like what was what was the I just was doing I, I mean I was doing it myself so yeah I had the notion of you know on Mondays I'd be giving market updates on Tuesdays I'd be giving some kind of seller tip you know I kind of had that that blocked out in my head I had it written down but I would still have to go in and create that content and Let's face it, sometimes our brains just aren't in the mood. Sometimes we're in the flow, sometimes we're not. We've got too many other things going on, whether it's contracts we're working on, some escrows. I mean, whatever it is, we're pulled in a million different directions. So actually finding when my brain was on one in that creative mode and I had the time I could sit down, I could go in, I could create that calendar. I, I literally, I mean, I spent maybe like a two hour block mm -hmm. on a Sunday. And I did this. So literally on my desk in front of me is my stapled monthly agenda with everything it's given me in the can, just so I can like see it. I'm, I'm very tactile. Not everybody needs that. They can do it all on their computer. But um, and so using that and then taking little notes and like sometimes I'll put on there like, you know, how many likes I had just so I can kind of see right now what's going on for the month of September and find if different things I'm doing because some of them I've done like um, where I've scripted my voice over it, describing like if it's a carousel, describing what it is, um, you know, g going into like contracts and giving, you know, loan appraisal and giving that definition rather than just having it on a little post for you to read it. I'm verbally saying it. I'm using Chad GPT to give me that also, um, you know, the, the verbal description so that I can put um, my voice over on this post. And I am finding it not only take me out of my shell of my own fears, because I hate hearing my voice. I know everybody mm -hmm. says it sounds the same, but um, I like when I'm talking, I hear it differently than I hear it from a recording. So no, it doesn't sound the same to me. Um, but knowing that if I don't do this, my assistant, this little bot, this chat GPT is going to be doing these things. I'm going to get lost by the wayside and I can't have everything electronic. I need people to, to find me, to connect with me. 
Um, I'm not you. I'm not anybody else in the Zoom. So there is something within me that they're going to connect with. And you just using this and picking those days on which post I'm going to use my voice. I mean, I'm still not doing myself like completely live in videos yet, but we'll get there. <laughs> Um, and just the time saver, I think. So knowing it saved me a boatload of time that has allowed me to be consistent basically every day, mm -hmm. um, getting my voice out there on a lot of my stuff now, and just seeing the the traction. I mean, LinkedIn alone is blowing me away, the numbers I'm seeing there. Uh, and, but and on, on the other sites, I've had you know lenders, which we're all probably seeing lenders reach out to us more. Um, but even contractors wanting to partner up. So it's been good. Well, so when you say contractors partnering up and reaching out to you, is that for, uh, to be referral partners? Is that? I've had both. So I've been hit up not only as a referral partner because I put in, um, I had put in a post somewhere needing uh, a bids and so I got a ton of contractors coming in that way. But then I guess, as we all know, people troll your stuff. And in doing so, one of those caught my social media and in their offer to submit a bid also asked, um, mentioning that they did view my social sites and seeing that I do a lot of business and look like I run my business in, in a way they would like to. They were interested in partnering up because they want to go more than just contracting and they want to do developments of apartment buildings. So they'd like to get into rehabbing themselves because he's a full general contractor. So it's kind of like a big score on that prospect lead. That's incredible. I think you should put your, um, if you if you want, um, your social media handle in the chat so that we can all follow you as well. And um, I, I'm so um, excited to hear that you're seeing results with LinkedIn as well, because that's just not, you know, we, we hear about Instagram and TikTok and Facebook, but LinkedIn, and we know of LinkedIn, and I think that there are probably fewer agents that are leveraging LinkedIn for their, as a lead source. Um, well, my team actually... Um... So just real quick, I'm with EXP. My team is huge. We've got some major heavy hitters on our team. So some of the internal training that can be provided for free is pretty intense, where you might have to go out and pay like a grand or a couple grand for a course. We're getting it directly firsthand. Um, and we've done some serious intense LinkedIn training. I actually just did one last week that I found um, on social sites as well. And I went in and redid my bio a little, tweaked it a little, you know, because every few years there's new analytics or something different's going on. Mm -hmm. So I did that. But uh, I think the biggest one with LinkedIn is just making sure you have a database in the first place. And if I could share... The biggest thing um, in one of my trainings that I was told is just you're seeking professionals. You're seeking people that have real jobs. So find your database, find your area, go in, find those firefighters, find those doctors, find those professions that are, as we learned through COVID, will always be employed and won't have any hiccups. Uh, do your max. I think it's 120 a week. You got to be careful because everybody's changing all the time what you can do before you get called out as spam in your request, but you just make those requests. And I think that again, the consistency and the more I think with LinkedIn, the more our posts are professional and we get away from just that little canned photo with something written on it and you start bringing more professional stuff, which I think in this group is what we're looking to do. Uh, you do get noticed by others because there's a million of us out there probably on their feed. So just changing it up and showing your marketing a little different. And when we have the resources to do it ourselves and don't need our professional photographer for that listing, there's so many different ways we can present ourselves mm -hmm. today to the market. And, you know, so I just appreciate you guys doing this. Well, I think, I think Tammy, you're a great um, inspiration for people that are wondering, like, how do I use AI or chat GPT to, to get leads, like exactly how does that work? And I think what you've shown and over the past couple of weeks you shared is that ChatGPT in this tech has really just unlocked a, a, a bumpers for you. It's given you a, an outline, a schedule, some sort of sense of consistency that you can go into your business with and then deploy the ideas that you already have, the things you already know that you need to do 
to be successful, but it just gives you the ability to do it, rinse and repeat over time and be that consistent voice within your market, within your sphere. And I think that that is probably if in Kristen, who is, um, I'm not sure if Kristen hopped on or if she's, um, she, she teaches tomorrow and she'll be on the call tomorrow at two. Um, that's what she always says is, you know, chat GPT is not going to necessarily, it can give you ideas for how to generate new business. But one of the best things that it can do for your business is give you a calendar and a set of just sort of principles with which you can go into your business and then consistently produce the piece of content or the social media content that you need in order to gain eyeballs on your business. Um, who else wants to share? Who else has something that they had success with this week in terms of using ChatGPT and AI? Anybody else? I know I did get a text while you guys are thinking about it. Um, last week, uh, a good friend texted me, um, I was just in the chat GPT mastermind. This is after the class. My mind is blown. I've been overcomplicating this in my head. And I think a lot of people are overcomplicating it. Uh, he goes on to say, I've needed to write job descriptions for weeks and have not had the time. It just crafted two beautiful descriptions in less than a couple of minutes. Now, this is someone who manages an office in Columbia of real estate agents and has no shortage of things to do. And uh, for him, it just created some job descriptions that he needed to pump out that he couldn't necessarily offload or it was on his to-do list that he needed to get done. And he just did it quickly. Uh, he says, I'm also having it write emails for me. Amazing. So these are all the little efficiencies that people are picking up and deploying in their business that um, sometimes tools overpromise. Some, and, and I think that there's a little bit of hype right now in AI where there's this promise and expectation even that's created about the tech that it can do everything, that it's going to just solve all of our problems. And the reality of the situation in my experience has been that it actually does some really simple things really well. <laughs> that writing emails, writing social media captions, creating content. Um, so for me, that's been my experience. And then there's also some other more advanced things that, and we'll talk about in a, in a second that I think are really exciting that are new and being developed. And I still think that they're kind of early, but um, they're being used and they're working. So we'll get into that. Um, but I don't want to skip over any other ahas or wins from this week. Toby mentioned in the chat, I've been playing with the ChatGPT API and so far I've used it to build out an automation to help declutter and sort out my email inbox. It scans my email and moves them to appropriately to appropriate folder labels. The ones I need to take action relater are optional. That is amazing. Yeah. And, and um, I think that that is something that if it's not already being deployed in Gmail or any of the major email server, client servers will be deployed pretty soon. Um, if, if that's something that's shareable, Toby, I know that there are people in the group that would absolutely love to get their hands on that, to test it, you know, that, totally up to you. Um, but I would love to try to create a culture in this group where we, we do bring those things forward and, and beta test them with each other if it's appropriate. Um, the... Uh, other thing that I wanted to mention is that, um, well, it's getting a little bit ahead of myself. Um, before we go on, if, if there's no one else that wants to share, um, is there, let's see. I've, uh, I've got something, Dylan. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, this week, uh, one of my primary focuses was to start building out some bigger lead magnets. And uh, so I was using ChatGPT uh, to create outlines for some lead magnet guidebooks that are like pretty well, like fully written books, right? And uh, what I was able to do was, and I'm using a, like a preceded uh, chat that uh, I put a lot of time into building out the actual like understanding in it. Um, but I was able to create the, the guideline and then use each of the sections of the guideline um, with some additional context to start creating out long format um, text pieces that I could build into ebooks. Um, and these e guidebooks, you know, they're coming out at about 20 pages covering, you know, one or two different topics. And the, the goal right now is to build out, you know, eight to 10 of these. Um, in each of the different subjects that I've got. So this is actually, I've only built out two of them so far, but I 
was finding a lot of success, you know, obviously you could sit down and write a, a book and, you know, there was a lot of discernment and editing that it was involved after I created that. But, um, you know, I was able to build one in pretty well an afternoon, um, opposed to maybe spending a week or longer on building those. So I think that was really cool. That is awesome. What is, so what was the, um, like the seed content for the, the outlines? Like what, where did you start? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I actually did write a book, um, a while ago. And so I, I seeded all of that information just pretty well chapter by chapter into it. So it had, um, context on my business, the real estate agents I work with, um, and some of the different framework concepts that we use. And then I seeded all of the information about, uh, some software that I built into it as well. Um, and so with that context, I was able to start working with that specific chat thread. Um, again, it just has a better understanding of uh, the subject matter. You know, what um, what are some like introductory concepts that a real estate agent using AI would want to know and how, how can they be successful using it uh, was kind of the premise of that specific, uh, you know, guidebook that I was building. That's awesome. And I'm sure you'll let us know when it's, when it's finished, right? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Oh, of course. Who else? Any big wins from this week? One of the questions that I had, there was just a thought. Um, I'm looking for an agent that, or a broker, whomever, I don't care if they're practicing real estate or not, that's actually using the uh, API for their MLS data and combining that with the API that OpenAI provides for its chat GPT products. Um, I'm just really curious to know if, and I'm sure that there are, there are one-off agents out there, I just don't know them yet, that are starting to play in the waters of taking the JSON formatted output you know, product that their MLS provides and using ChatGPT to digest that and create some really cool products or learn something really cool about their market. So if any of you um, in conversations over the next week or whenever meet someone that's doing that, um, I'd love to talk to that person. Um, I think that's a, a really exciting next level sort of application of this technology in our business. And I'm sure some of the big companies are already, they already have the ability and capability to do that and create things and learn. Um, but for us smaller, you know, we're just agents here or um, real estate technologists. Um, you know, we don't necessarily have the resources to do that. So if someone that you know does, please let me know. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to do today and interrupt me if anyone has questions or, or comments or wonderments, please go ahead and, and just chime in. Um, last week, we went over the advanced data analysis function in ChatGPT, which was, there was a topic that was posted in the Facebook group a couple of days, or yesterday or earlier today, um, about chat PDF. The advanced data analysis function in ChatGPT basically allows anyone to upload any file that contains text and have ChatGPT digest the chat, the text in the, the document, and then enables you to chat with the document. So um, in ChatGPT, if you have ChatGPT+, Plus, what you're going to want to do in order to get access to this is go to settings and beta and go to beta features and click the toggle for advanced data analysis. This is going to give you access to advanced data analysis capabilities within ChatGPT4. And there's one more step that you need to do in order to turn it on. Once you hover over GPT4, just click this little section here, advanced data analysis, and that'll activate advanced data analysis. And then what you can do is in the spot where you would normally type and ask, chat GPT a question or brainstorm about something, you click this plus button and attach a file. And I have a, um, I have a buyer guide. Let me see what happens. Um, you can attach a PDF of anything, basically an inspection report. You can attach a PDF of a contract. You can attach a PDF of a buyer guide of a book. Um, you can attach a PDF of your 
bank statements and have ChatGPT help you analyze the document or ask questions about the document. So for this buyer guide, I'm gonna just set a really low bar here and just click enter and see what happens whenever I do that and see what it says. Um, it says, I see you've uploaded a PDF file named Complete Buyer's Guide. And how may I assist you with this file? Would you like to extract text, search for specific information or something else? Um, so one of the things that you can do is just say, could you summarize this for me? And ChatGPT is just gonna use its ability to process language to read the text in the document and then provide some sort of coherent salient summary. And the format in which it does this sort of varies depending on the instance of uh, the, you know, the conversation that you have, depending on the context of what you've been working on before. Um, it's in an unreadable format. So this is a common issue that I have whenever the PDF is created by something like Canva. Um, so if, if you have a buyer's guide that's created in Can Canva or it's formatted strangely, it may not be able to read it. So let's try a different one. Let's see if it has success with this one. If not, then... Um, I'll upload a video later of another example that works and provide the PDF. Um, these are just two buyer's guides that I downloaded recently while I was working on one of my own. Um, but anyways, case in point, why would you want to do this? Why would you want to upload PDFs or upload text files to ChatGPT? Um, one of the main reasons is that ChatGPT can only work with what it knows. So if you've created a novel piece of text or a novel piece of information and you want to ask questions about it, then you need to provide ChatGPT with access to that. So you can upload a document that you've created and then ask questions about it. In this case, um, it says the this buyer's guide contains these different sections. Um, so the buyer's guide that I uploaded includes information about the buying process. And so it's telling me that these are the different sections of the, the buyer guide. So it was able to take a look at it and give me some information about it, kind of summarizes it. So I don't have to scroll through it and read the whole thing. Um, you can also upload data. Uh, so one of the things that I love using it for is to upload information about the market. Um, and I'm doing this live. I've never done this with this particular data set before. I have this thing that Facebook provided me about the group. Um, this is insights about the ChatGPT and AI mastermind for real estate Facebook group in terms of the members and uh, the rate of acquisition of members and the growth of the group. So I'm going to see what information it can provide me about the Facebook group. Um, and I'm just going to basically ask it it's just that. So this is what we went over last week, how to get into advanced data analysis. Um, I have a lot of fun just playing with this. And again, one of the main things that I use it for is learning about my market and getting really specific high resolution data about specific neighborhoods. Um, so I uploaded this Excel sheet. And since I'm not an Excel person, if you're not an Excel person, this is a great way to interact with data. If you're not really interested in opening up Excel and looking at columns and rows, you can dump it into ChatGPT in the advanced data analysis tab and have ChatGPT do the looking for you and then tell you what you need to know. It gives you access to the information quickly and in a very coherent way so that it makes it easy to read and then take and do something with it. Um, so this says this Excel sheet contains daily numbers um, related to the group's activity. Popular days could show which days of the week are most active for the group. Popular times might indicate the times of day when the group is most active. Top posts um, list the most popular engaging posts over the last 28 days. And then it gives information about the demographics of the members and contributors. So uh, Tammy might have an Excel sheet from her LinkedIn account, for example, that would provide information to her about 
the best time of day to post, uh, the best day to post, and give her insights into the interactions with her social media that would help her plan better in the future with respect to her content calendar. So that's one of the use cases that I could just kind of quickly envision for this type of routine. Uh, if you have a like a business account with Instagram or I don't have, I don't do TikTok, but if any of you do TikTok, I don't know if it provides some sort of analytics. You can take your analytics from your social media accounts, dump them into ChatGPT. And then at the same time that you're planning a content calendar, marry the data set of the content calendar with a data set of the insights and the interactions with your group or your page or your account on Instagram or TikTok and see what it tells you. And then put that into practice and try it out for a little bit and see what happens. Um, that's one of the, the kind of more cutting edge ways of using this advanced data analysis tab. Um, so if anyone has that data, I encourage you to, to do it over the next week and, and report back next week and let's see how that works. Um, I will use my commitment to you guys is I will use the information from the Facebook insights to try to kind of keep up with what ChatGPT is telling me I should be doing in the Facebook group. So I feel like we're get, getting kind of meta here. Look, I'm, I'm in the group, on a Zoom in the group, talking about ChatGPT, using information about the group in ChatGPT, and then telling it to tell me what to do. Um, anyways, that's advanced data analysis. Um, in a nutshell, that's what we went over last week. Um, one of the things that I would love to just kind of, are there any questions about that or any, has anyone used it in the last week or plan on using it or have any, any thoughts? I don't want to just like blow past this. <clears throat> cool. Okay. So let's go to this tab here. One of the things that I wanted to make sure that everyone left today uh, with is at least something to, to look at in their business that could be a source of content. Um, I mentioned in when I posted earlier that there is a really cool generative AI tool for long form video that will help you create short form yeah, video. Okay. What's up? Oh. oh, I think she just muted. Azadeh, what's that? Sorry about that. I that was I was unmuted. Sorry. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. Um, so, uh, how many of you are using video in your business? Can raise your hand or post in the chat. Is anyone using video in their business or thinking yeah, about using video? One of our primary. That's your primary, Cody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we we uh we house on social media as well as YouTube. Who else is using video? Timmy, do you use video? And it and and it's video. Uh, yes. you mentioned not of you, but um, you you talking over. Like yeah, the I'll talk over videos. Um, I I think I just put one up. I you know, there's a little clip like driving down a road, and then you know, a bunch of the house photos, and in there it's like there's a caption, like a seller calls and this is what I do. And then it's, you know, me driving and then I talk over it and there's different little things I've got up there. So mm. Mm. a lot of the ones that I do the talking over are the ones that are more. Um, so I have on one day where I'm doing everything contracts. So I'm just breaking down something in a contract where it's loan appraisal um, or loan contingency, you know, appraisals um, just, you know, escalation clause, and then I'll break it down. And instead of what I would have done would just put like a little photo up and then a description of it. How boring is that? No, we know nobody's going to read it, but I would have wasted my time and energy doing that. Now I'll take that and I'll maybe make a carousel because, you know, depending on what platform you're on, other thing, you know, certain things will be more appealing or more views and carousels seem to be much more productive on Instagram um, I still haven't, if anybody's figured out the TikTok algorithms, I really can't get my videos past a, 
the the mid twos up to threes. I think I got one that went to the eights, but it was I don't know. <laughs> but I would love to see those numbers go up, and I'd love to see my followings on TikTok go up if somebody can help me. But no, I'm not one of those agents doing stupid dances. I'm sorry if you do. I don't mean it that way. But for me, I'm just I'm not going to get up there and do it. it makes no sense. <laughs> Well, maybe the tool that we're going to talk about here in the next 20 minutes will be something that you can test out. Um, one of the things in my business, I, you know, we've all heard video is king and you need to be doing video. And and I know that when we're all scrolling through social media, we see all these agents that are doing video. And for me personally, I've been like, man, I, I just there, there was something between me and doing video that I could never get resolved. Um, and one of those things is. is the just the process of the creation of the content. I, I never struggled for the ideas. And if you do, I'm going to show you how ChatGPT can help you with the ideas. Um, but for me, the ideas were never the problem. It was really just the carrying through from the idea to the actual creation of the video and then the editing. None of us ever got into this business wanting to be a, a marketer and to edit videos on our computer. Um, or maybe you did, in which case you probably are creating video already. Um, but one of the things that's come out is a, then there are a couple of tools that use AI to help with that process of content creation to lower that barrier, to make it easier for everyone to create video, to make video content creation accessible to anyone that has a story to tell, a passion to a tell, a, a passion to share or, or something to say. Um, so really quickly, I just wanted to step through a an example routine that you could do to quickly create dozens of pieces of short form content that you can then go on to post on TikTok or post on Instagram or Facebook and Google and YouTube. So, cause you can post on your Google My Business profile, small videos as well. Um, so one thing that I recommend is that if you have ChatGPT, um, open, go ahead and, and head over to the, the chat. I'm going to post in the group here, a prompt. And if you want to follow along, you can paste this prompt into your prompt box. Um, we're gonna start off by just prompting ChatGPT to give us some ideas about things that we could talk about to our audience that's relevant to our audience. Now you may not, maybe you don't work with buyers, maybe you just work with sellers, in which case you could tweak this. But the prompt is this, generate a list of 90 lesser known facts about the process of buying real estate presented in random order for each point, provide an explanation while highlighting the process of buying real estate, Craft the explanations to be detailed and engaging, offering insights that would captivate potential buyers and clients. The goal is to educate my audience, showcase my expertise, and attract new clients. Ensure that the topics you include are intriguing, aligned with the interests of my potential buyers, serving as rich material for future content creation. So I like this lesser known facts prompt because it comes up with really cool hooks and topics for me to then go in and, and, and tweak a little bit, but then just go spend a couple of minutes filming myself on my phone talking about. Um, so the result is this, it's breaking this up into, so it's saying that it would be quite extensive to create a comprehensive list of 90 lesser known facts. This has never said that to me before. Um, nonetheless, uh, due to the length, I'll break it down into multiple sections. Let's start with the first 30 lesser known facts. So the first one, the power of comparables. Um, this is the topic. So for me, uh, the way that I, and I'll show you exactly how I organize this information. Um, that's the topic of the first video, the power of comparable. So we're sharing with our audience, the importance of looking at comps. It gives you an explanation on it, really the significance of this particular topic as well. So it says experienced real estate agents often look at comparables or comps, which are similar homes in the area that have recently been sold. This helps them assess the true value of the property. If you want a competitive edge, learn how to read comps like a pro. Okay, so that's that's an interesting explanation. I think it did a pretty good job of coming up with an explanation about the power of comparables. Um, you could then go on to tweak that explanation a little bit uh, using your voice and then film a video. The old fashioned way to be just to film a standalone video um, of yourself on that topic, click start and stop 
re record it, upload it, um, and not do a whole lot. Um, it came up with 90 different topics here, um, which is pretty incredible. Plot maps, the under contract misconception. So it's coming up with really interesting hooks and little tidbits of information about the process of buying real estate that I think would be interesting to create content around. The way that I organize this information in my world, in my life is I'm an Excel guy. So I like to, tables. Um, I have a little Excel sheet of topics. I've done this several times and I have the topic organized here with question hooks. And um, the reason why I do a question hook is because um, I found that whenever you start with a question, it gets people thinking about the answer and then you go on to provide an answer. And then sometimes there's a mismatch between what someone was thinking and what you say. And there's an opportunity there for engagement, uh, which I think is, is sometimes really educational and helpful. And it forms a really deep connection. Um, so typically what like the way that I was viewing this project that I had, so I, I was wanting to create a ton of video surrounding all these different topics. And I created this huge list and I just got overwhelmed because I was like, oh my gosh, now I have to go sit down and actually do it and edit all that content. And I just felt like it would take a lot of time. And so I just stopped and I never did it. But what I've discovered recently is there, there's a tool that, we can use in order to really batch process the content creation process in terms of video. Um, the tool that I've recently started using is Opus Clip. Um, I'm going to put this list, this URL in your chat box here. Um, Opus Clip is a really fantastic tool. Um, if you don't know about it yet, you do now. Um, the amazing thing about Opus Clip is that you can upload hours of video and it will use AI to pull out the most salient pieces of the video and create short form content. So one of the things that I did this morning was I took last week's Zoom topic zoom call that was recorded and i dumped it into opus clip i waited about 10 minutes and let me go over to the results maybe it's in here And it took 60 minutes of a Zoom call and created one, two, three, four, let's see. This is insane. I didn't even scroll all the way down in this morning and created 30 short form videos that I can download and upload into my social media. So the first one is one that I posted in the Facebook group today. If you haven't watched it yet, go watch it. I, I spent about 30 seconds editing this short form video that it created about the, the video itself that it created is about using the advanced data analysis functionality of chat GPT. And it intelligently compiled the most important, like 10 seconds of my speech. I'm a rambler. If you can't tell already 10 seconds of my speech in, in, into, you know, 10 second segments to make a 60 second video and captioned it for me and then scored it. And it provides this really cool explanation as to why it thinks it did a good job or why it thinks it did a 99 instead of 100 or 99 instead of a 60. Um, so this is the video here, and it says this video's hook statement grabs attention and creates curiosity. It effectively explains the program's ability to analyze real estate data and provides valuable examples. The speaker's enthusiasm creates a personal connection, and the video addresses the current trend of data analysis. The video could benefit from a clear call to action. So it's telling me, oh, I could, I could add a little card at the end of this to make it even more impactful. Um, but what happens with Opus Clip or Opus Clip Pro is you can go in, you can edit the actual result. Um, 
what I thought was really cool is that once it finished extracting the bits of the 60 minute video into this clip, it enables you to go into the clip and start tweaking the actual language in the sections of the script that it's using along with the actual video. So on the left here is what was actually said. So Opus Clip will create a transcript for you and it will show you the entire like section of frames that are, are gonna be shown in the clip. So you can go in and um, select different parts of the video, delete them, split them. Um, one of the things that I had to do was initially the way that it framed the, the Zoom call was really weird. So like you saw portions of people's faces that just kind of were distracting. So you can go in and actually move the frame around. And if you've been watching, you know, reels or TikToks or Instagram um, or YouTube shorts, you've probably seen this font and this this style of reels before. And um, I literally did this in the most, the, the thing that took the longest was, longest was uploading the video. Um, so I think that this is something I'm definitely going to continue using and to kind of bring it back to what I was trying to talk about earlier with the questions and the pieces of content that uh, I wanted to create. Now I can just sit down for an hour and pick 10 of these and fumble through them and just talk direct into the camera and not worry about starting and stopping the recording on my phone or my computer. I can just click record, go through and say what I need to say and upload it into Opus Clip and have it do the heavy lifting of the editing. It is probably next to, next to ChatGPT. It's, it's, one of those products that I think will be super, super valuable in terms of an investment and an ROI. If you are looking to create video and there's been an activation energy that's just been really difficult to get over because of the concerns over editing and having to, how do I caption this? Like what app do I use? Obis Clip makes it super easy to do that. And if you get the free account, which I have the free account right now, the account comes with like five hours of credits. So you have five hours of like, like five hours is a lot. I mean, you could say a lot in five hours, you could create 90 days of content with five hours. So that's what I plan on doing. I plan on going through all of these. I plan on um, creating video and then adding that to my content calendar and to my process. Before I go on, I want to um, show you an example of an agent that is doing this at a really high level, that's doing an excellent job um, with this type of content. I'm gonna post her Instagram in the, I'm gonna find it first and then I'll post the Instagram. Um, let's see, just so you can get an idea of like what this could look like for you. Um, since I haven't done it yet. Okay, here we go. So you may have heard of Katie Day before. Katie Day is an agent that's in Houston. She is extraordinary at creating short form content for her business surrounding information and pieces of content that, that's super valuable to buyers. Like I, I follow her. I love her content. I learn something every time I watch one of her shorts or her reels. Um, go over to her reels, take a look, watch a couple. It's really amazing how hooky they are and how catchy they are, but also how like not trite they are. There's so many, I know we all know that the agent in our market that's producing video right now, that's just like, you're just like, Oh, I don't want to create video like that. I don't, I don't want that. Just that seems old and boring and repetitive. She does a really fantastic job of covering some really boring topics like adjustable rate mortgages and making it fun. Um, so 
with that, um, I hope that that was helpful, at least as a sort of a, an intro into what's possible with video in your business. Um, if video is something that you want to do and you're interested in how you can create a lot of short short video content in a, in a short amount of time, um, I think Opus Clip is a really good resource. Um, it, again, created like 30. So some of these are probably really bad. Um, but let's see, this bottom one was 60. So I, I'll have to go through all of these and just take a look and see what the differences are. But I thought this was really incredible. And it kind of just get, gets me to the thing that I want to do faster, which is share what I know about my market and share what I know about the process about buying real estate through my eyes with my buyers or with my sellers or with my clients in sphere. Um, so I hope that if, if, if you're planning on doing this, it, give it a try. It's free to use and try out. Um, and I think that if we can get all the people in this group creating really kick-ass video and helping you guys get, get new leads, I think that's, that's one of the ways in which ChatGPT and this AI can really make a difference in your business. Um, so that's all I really wanted to share today. Um, I, what we plan on doing in the next couple of weeks is we're moving into business planning. So a lot of our conversations on the Zoom calls will start to circle around planning for 2024. I know many of you are already probably thinking about January and February in the first quarter. So we're going to start focusing in on how we can use ChatGPT to help us come up with business plans, uh, mission, vision, values, personal statements uh, for professional lives and for our personal lives. Um, so the topics that we'll be covering will center around that. If you have any ideas or things that you would like to know how to do with ChatGPT surrounding business planning, um, let us know and um, we can all work through it together. How is everyone feeling about everything? ChatGPT, Is anyone else using similar video editing software like Opus Clip already? There, there are a couple. Um, I think Opus Clip is the one that is experiencing the most success right now in terms of its use. Um, I've never even heard of Opus Clip, so thank you for bringing it to my attention. Oh, totally welcome. Let me... Um, yeah. I, I've actually just yeah, been I using CapCut. <laughs> you what? I've been using CapCut. Oh, yeah, I know. So I, I was a huge CapCut fan. And I mean, I have it on my phone still. But editing on my phone, and I know like the, you know, a lot of kids edit on their phone and they're pros at it. But for me, I'm like just fumbling around and then it's saving to iCloud and Google Photos and my phone and and then like why ha it's just it, to me it was really clunky and cumbersome to do and then i like save all these edits to my my camera reel and i it, to me it was just so difficult to really put it all together in a meaningful way and all it was preventing me from actually just sharing what i wanted to share with people um and i was also i think trying to use it to do what i saw other agents were doing and i couldn't quite figure out how to do it so for me opus clip opus clip gave me the ability to just take this huge chunk of raw footage upload it in it and then create something that was actually usable like i went from that zoom call video to something that i could post and it's not perfect in it it took about 10 minutes, I think, for it to fully upload and then caption, and then another one to two to change some of the shots in the uh, the recording. And then I just downloaded it and that was it. Um, it was great. Yeah, Cody, I think since you're doing video for your YouTube channel, um, I think you would really like Opus Clip. I think it would it would do some really cool things for you. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to dive in. I actually already um, built out an account. I'm curious, though, uh, if it's going to go because um, I do a lot of screen sharing. So if it's going to go full screen or how that's going to play. But I'm excited to dive in. Yeah, it 
it really has a mind of its own. Like the, the AI tech behind it really did a good job, in my opinion, of creating variety in the shots. So with the short 60 second video that I shared, like I didn't say anything about what to show when and, and when to show the screen and when to show faces. So it was, it was really funny to see when it shows, I think Trent and you or, or someone else, um, it, it shows your faces at, at some point. And I hope that's okay. If it's not, I'll take it down. It's like not being shared for anything. Like if, if you can get this at all, <laughs> go ahead, man. Um, but yeah, it just sort of just did its thing. And I, it was so hands off and it, we're all so busy and we feel the need to keep up and we have a lot to say and share. And I think that it's just like, a, it, it, I feel so, ex I haven't felt this excited um, since I started using ChatGPT. Like, this is awesome. Now I get to create video. Like, and before I was just like, I guess I'm not going to do that. Like, I guess I'll just have to, you know, fumble along, but yeah, I'm excited. Well, does anyone have any questions? Not a question, Dylan, but just wanted to say thanks for showing us about this Opus clip as well, because uh, uh, I've got a video that I've been wanting to chop up. So now that I've been exposed to this, I'm going to upload it, you know, and, and see how it goes. So I'll give you guys some feedback next week on uh, how it did for me. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm so excited to see what it comes up with for you. Um, and you know, I had limited time when I uploaded it. So I just chose that first option that it gave me as the one, that, but who knows, maybe the second one was the one I should have used or the third one. Like it's the, the cool thing is it doesn't just give you one thing to work with and then you're constrained, like gives you so many options. It, uh, I, th I think that, uh, so, and, and one of the things that I didn't really go over with this is you can, um, you can upload your video and then there's another step between uploading the video and the output, which is this screen. And that step is pretty important because you can prompt Opus Clip to extract certain pieces of the video. Like I, I could have told it to extract the part of the video last week where I was actually going over the result, that like the graphs and stuff. And, and I didn't do that. I just, I just said, do select the most important parts of the video that you think are the most important parts or whatever. Um, so it did that, but you can prompt it to really just pull specific stories from the entire video and see what it comes up with. And, and then you can get more refined with that. Uh, so it's, it's pretty powerful. I just went for the low hanging fruit, like just let me like steamroll on through and, and get to the end as quickly as possible method. Um, but there's a lot more, there's a lot more levers that you can pull on and knobs to turn in the software. So um, I'm really excited to see what you come up with. Um, and then you too, Cody, it'll, it'll be cool to, to kind of test this out together. Yeah, I'll, uh, Bill, you know I'll, if I'll you bring can, it back uh, to the guy. Do I know if what? Yeah, I was gonna ask, uh, do you know if you can upload from like the Dropbox? Um, or does it have to be like stored on your your computer? Yeah, so I think that you either either upload a downloaded file or you can drop the link. Um, so if your video is in a Dropbox folder that's open and it's publicly viewable, you could try it. Try it and let us know. Um, I'm not sure. I think that I I haven't again. I haven't tried to upload anything via a link, um, but. I'm guessing that you could literally drop a video link for anyone's content and create a clip out of it. Um, so yeah, I, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do a Dropbox thing as long as there's, it's not like gated behind any permissions and um, it could get to the MP4 file. But you'll have to try it, let us know. Yeah, we will do. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, guys. If there's if there's nothing else, uh, I hope you guys have a great week. Um, I'll be on the call tomorrow uh, as well, and I really look forward to to meeting up again next week and seeing all the amazing things that we created with, if not with Opus Clip, then with ChatGPT. All right. Thank See you. See ya. Have a good one. Thank you, Dylan. Bye, Azadeh.
by uh actually i have a question for you oh, directly yeah. um do you follow isabel bedoya on linkedin no i don't okay she is a resource that you need to tap into because she's covered opus and everything she so her name is isabel bedoya um and she's with marketing pros dot ai okay a lot of information on ai it's she's definitely a resource that you should follow okay. her if you can uh, um, oh. i s isabella bedoya i see okay yeah i'm gonna post and that she, yeah, yeah and she has videos on youtube as well people interviewing her about chat gpt that's like pretty basic but her linkedin channel she's got lots of great information uh thank you so much see this yes, is what it's all about welcome. yes we um i have not met her i don't know her i uh, haven't run into her but yeah, I, I will definitely take a look. And you, yes. said, you said she has YouTube as well. Well, she doesn't, but there's videos of her being interviewed. Okay. About Chat GPT, but um, she's not real estate, oh, but it's yeah. still very, very, very helpful. Yeah, that's that's allowed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just yeah, letting yeah. you know. Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. See you next time. All right. See Thank you. Next you. Time. Yep. Bye -bye. Okay. Bye bye. Guys.